finally. Ruiner is a cyberpunk shoot-em-up game starring a very expensive cosplay idea. There have been all kinds of good twin stick shooters over the years, but people were asking me about this one pretty frequently. I mean, just using my eyeballs looks like a combination between Ghost in the Shell and Drive. That by itself is a good selling point. The combat looked fast and brutal, and the whole package seemed stylish. So, let's see what the game's all about. It's the year 2091, and... that's all you get for now. Your character installed a terrible VPN service that their favorite unboxer told them was good, and now their brain has been hacked. You're playing as a powerful cyborg fighter with a mechanical arm. Your only goal is to kill the boss of heaven, which is the local megacorporation. Things don't go according to plan, and you're left for dead. You're only saved by a different hacker called Her, who dubs you as Puppy. Just in case the hacking didn't work, Puppy's brother was also kidnapped to try and force him to kill the boss. That's your motivation. Go get your brother. It is simple, but story is more of a bonus for these kinds of games anyway. Looking at the graphics, Ruiner is an impressive game. Twin stick games like this are usually a lot simpler fidelity-wise, but here it looks like they took every advantage the Unreal 4 engine could give them. You've got dramatic dynamic lighting and shadows, lots of detail in the textures, and the animation and particle work is pretty good too. It's always satisfying to punch man into a Gushers commercial, or skeletonize one with an energy weapon. That's always welcome. The world itself is made up of shiny high-tech factories and dirty slums, and sometimes a combination of both. Above anything, this game really likes the color red. I mean, Jesus Christ, Mark Rothko didn't have this much red in his life. I do think it stays stylish and doesn't get grating. Maybe because it doesn't have time to be grating. The first time I beat the campaign, it took about four hours. Beyond that, I think the game does have great art direction. I like how new enemies are introduced, and the character designs can be a lot of fun. You have 3D scenes that transition to these graphic novel-style parts for the dialogue. The art brings so much character, and it works well. Which does make me wonder why they don't do that sometimes. They'll have 3D parts where it's acted out, but there's no actual voice acting. The scenes work perfectly when it's stylized, but when it's not, it's awkward. Let me show an example. Okay. Overall, I think it does deliver on the visual style and atmosphere. You can pick out lots of cyberpunk stuff they're influenced by, but they made it their own thing too. What they do have is thin, but I'd like to see more. On a caveman brain level, it's fun to paint the environments with your enemies. I do wish I could have painted on a different level color like white. For a moment, I thought that was going to happen, and then no. There was no escape from the action-packed trip to Cyber Detroit. Ruiner does have a very good combat soundscape. The guns sound punchy, and Melee gives good meaty feedback, but the real star is how it works with the music. Ruiner has an incredibly fitting soundtrack, and a good variety too. Most of the music was done by two individual artists, one being a Polish DJ called Zamilska, and the other a UK-based producer called Sidewalks and Skeletons. Now, I'm not Grimbeard, so I don't know the exact genre of electronic music this is. Supposedly a lot of it is... Witch House and Electro. Whatever it is meshes great with the gameplay, and there are a few other guest artists on there as well. They even managed to license Susumu Hirasawa's Island Door. If you haven't seen stuff with his work in it, I just feel bad for you. When it came to the aesthetics, they nailed it. You're playing as Ryan Gosling with a game sphere for a head, beating the shit out of the scum of the earth to Akira music, and they made it cool. I don't think many would argue that the game doesn't look or sound amazing for what it is. I was warned repeatedly that the game was notoriously difficult. It turns out that's mainly why IGN gave it a 6 out of 10. So with that in mind, I went through the first time on normal, and it wasn't too bad. Now it can be a very frantic game. I did get the impression it's a lot harder with a controller, and after trying it out, yeah, that's definitely the case. On the positives, the combat looks great and mainly feels great. 
I did hear it compared to Hotline Miami sometimes, and I'm really not sure where that comes from. I mean, Murder Man with a mask and a cool drive jacket, sure. Overhead view of the violence where you're switching through weapons a lot, yeah, I can see that. Same publisher too, I guess. But that's where it ends. If you were hoping for Cyberpunk Hotline Miami, this is not it. In Hotline Miami, you're raiding buildings. You can look around a bit to figure out which guy to take out first, which weapon you want to grab. It is very tactical, and then gets frantic as things get loud. You and your enemies die in only a hit or two, so positioning is incredibly important. By being proactive, you can control how a lot of the fight will flow. But you're also rewarded for your skill in reacting. Even if a plan goes south, if you're fast enough, you can still win. Pure Twitch reflexes can take down a mobster and is roided up Scooby-Doo. But it never hurts to look around and plan first. Ruiner is almost purely reactive. Your enemies are dropping out of the sky or running out of doors and sealed off arenas. The arenas are separated by the rest of the level, and there's an occasional wandering enemy or two, but these wandering dudes aren't the focus and the level design doesn't matter at all for them. Even in the arenas and boss fights, the map layout doesn't matter that much. You'll mainly be looking for what surfaces you can deflect shots off of and explosive barrels. More intricate arenas could be fun, but I don't know if the AI could handle it. The fights are usually more open based on your speed and your accuracy. On every difficulty, you and your enemies can take multiple hits before going down. Most of the weapons you find have a good amount of ammo in them. You don't need to be flipping to a new gun every two seconds. Ruiner has a very fair time to kill, but it will punish you for staying still or not using your abilities properly, which I'll go over since there are skills and upgrades. Having said that, the base combat is fast and fun. The game will slow down briefly during a combo, or when you hold the dash button down to pull off a quick maneuver. There's also a slow motion ability in case you want to be horrendously overpowered. If you damage a bad man in just the right special way, you can then execute them. You're invincible while doing them, but they are fast and it is a game option. If you turn this off, they don't stun, they just flop over dead. Which isn't as fun as seeing someone's head decide to move off-planet. Plus, it helps accent those combo callouts. As for the skill system, there are a lot of moves to learn. You've got your basic passives like more health and energy, more ammo and shoot guns you pick up, or more durability and melee hit sticks. Nothing too notable on that front. As for actives, you can throw it on deployable shields, use AoE stun or frag attacks, hack your enemy's brains to help you, lose it and go fucking nuts. There's a good amount of options, and if you like something, you can upgrade it further. Some things cost more skill points than others, but you can move these around at any time. So as you play, new abilities unlock and you have more points to move around. What is weird is that there's a level cap at 35, but you can just randomly find skill points around in the game world. You can even switch out a slot's active ability with a wheel, which I never had a reason to do. This sounds like it should work well on paper, but something is off. I'm not even 100% on it, but I'll try to explain. <laughs> your starting abilities are your dash and your shield. Upgraded, they're both fun to use and incredibly effective. The shield can deflect enemy shots and later can stun the enemies if you ram them with it. Higher dash skill means more charges that regenerate more often. The overload ability can also be great, but really with the previous two, you can be set for the whole game. This isn't just an issue of, oh, you found the overpowered thing, just don't use it, shovelhead. I've gone through the game multiple times now with all kinds of skill sets. Moment to moment fights were good, but the bosses especially felt odd. This was on both normal, hard, and new game plus. It would either feel like I'm doing this the hard way, or wow, I'm completely cheesing this guy. I'm not completely sure, but I think it's tied to enemy behavior and the time to kill. The AI seems to be at its best and smartest when there's no obstacle in the way. Just you and the enemy on a flat surface dashing around. I am assuming because you don't need to unlock the dash skill, but the game sure seems built around it. There are encounters that seem tailor-made for your dash and shield, but feel awkward to play without them. It plays like you're doing something wrong, but you can survive it. That survivability makes weird builds viable, but also makes the combat a slog at points. It's hard to balance enemy health thresholds on any difficulty if you can upgrade your own. Now throw in all the weapons you can pick up and the other abilities you can get, and even good AI would be hard to balance around that. Your enemy isn't that smart, but it's unpredictable. You could fight a boss who loves to use shields and constantly zones you out. You get your ass kicked, restart, try the exact same thing, and now they never use their shields. It is neat to try new abilities out, but it feels like it's obscuring a simpler, better system that could be there. Ruiner can tailor itself around fewer skills, but in more interesting ways. It's a unique experience to play a game where you go, oh that's bullshit, both when you die, and when you kill a boss. The screen fills with fiery Israeli housewarming gifts and suddenly, someone's dead. How did I kill him so fast? That's bullshit. This doesn't stop the game from being enjoyable, and you do kind of figure out the groove. Ruiner does have a good New Game Plus mode. You keep what skills you have, and it puts everything on the hardest difficulty possible. A bunch of new weapons start appearing, enemy boss fights have goons now, the enemy is way more aggressive. It plays better, but that might be because now you know what to expect. You could make the game deadlier, where everyone drops only a few shots, but the screen gets so chaotic as is, you'd basically have to rework everything. I do think the combat is flawed, but I still like playing Ruiner. This brings me to the second big issue in that there's not a whole lot to replay in it. I'm going to show you a part and see if you automatically assume what this game will have in it. Awesome. 
your section and level ranks are not tracked. If this was a Hotline Miami clone, they could have taken that. It is so bizarre to rank you, but not save it anywhere. In fact, if you beat New Game Plus, it just resets you. No save profiles, no nothing. What makes it weirder is that there are other game modes that do save your score. There's a wave-based Gladiator Arena with bonus games that tracks your score. There's a speedrun mode that removes all story elements to see how fast you can get through the game. And both of these modes have rewards with unlockable outfits. I'm not mad your ranks are tracked, it's just such a bafflingly obvious thing to have. Like the game has ranks, it just doesn't save them. Having a scoreboard to review and go, man, I can go back and S-rank that part, just seems like such an obvious thing to have. It's funny and genuinely weird that there's no scoreboard. The story doesn't give you much of a reason either. There is a city hub you visit for downtime between mission sections, but there's not much in here. You have the same side quests to do a few times, and can pick up some bonus objectives for your mission, but that's very strong phrasing. It's stuff like finding a few hidden collectibles or killing mini-bosses, which you'd be doing anyways. It sucks because I love the atmosphere of this hub level, but it is severely underdeveloped. You only get some hints at interesting stories and characters. The main story is simple and solid, but cuts off too soon. Again, a story is a bonus for this kind of game, but if you don't want spoilers, go to here. Yeah. Throughout the game you have dialogue options, but they're meaningless. There might have been a time or two where it changed up dialogue slightly, but I can't remember if it did. So it doesn't have that experience the journey slightly differently effect either. They do lampshade this, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Now for the main premise, if you know anything about cyberpunk, you know about implanted memories and other brain fuckery. I'd wager most people would figure out early that the brother thing was a ploy. We know nothing about him or even puppy. So expecting anyone to care about this would be a bad idea. Of course they didn't do that. Plus, you know, her looks kind of suspicious. Maybe it's how evil she looks when she asks you to murder people and hack their brains. Or it could be because she has bad written across her headset. It seems clear you're being played, but the intrigue comes from what the goal could be. If Ruiner has a theme, besides the color red, it's control. Someone is always using someone to use someone else. At one point you defeat a boss of heaven called Trafficking, which is a fun name. You can then tase him to open doors to get deeper into heaven's complexes. He points out how you can't talk, we're all being played, and then dies when you use him to open the spicy door. Except not really, because a different boss then shoves his brain in a cyborg body to fight you. The same body is controlled by different people for their own goals. This is what it's all about, and things get interesting right at the end. Puppy finally rescues his brother, and the truth is revealed. There is no brother, but there kind of is. After seeing his brother, he passes out and is restrained. It turns out that Puppy is a clone of the boss of the company. One of likely many nobodies he has stored away in case he needs a new part. Like Puppy's real arm, for instance. The first hacker used Puppy's body because Heaven's automated security wouldn't fire on the boss's DNA. This first hack was done by corporate higher-ups trying to oust the big guy. Then her contacted the boss and said, I can hack Puppy back and use him to kill all those corporate stooges. Which is what you were doing the whole game. You weren't a lost puppy, you were just being led. As a bonus, the mask let the boss feel the radical corporate restructuring himself. He got to experience the murdering without actually doing it. So then what does her do with this? What? She's an AI or something that was using you to take over heaven. Digging around in the game, it's hinted that she might be a sentient satellite, or it could be how they explain the overhead camera, or both. What's weird is that it looks like they're setting up a ha ha ha, I know all your moves too kind of boss fight. Those make up some of the best boss battles. Instead, you fight off waves of enemies, which I guess the game is better at anyhow, but it's still a letdown. The boss then points out how you've had no choices, and here you can finally make one. It's not spelled out, but you either hack his brain or beat him to death. Having these choices be meaningless throughout the game does say something, but I can't say I buy into it being clever. Especially when there are games that play with these ideas way better. Her told Puppy to meet her where heaven falls, and Puppy rides off to do that. The game is over right when things are getting interesting. What I do like is that when it kicks you to the main menu, I think it's supposed to be when Puppy's coming down from this tower. The music and the no file written across his face does make me feel something because this is a guy realizing that he's nobody. I would like to see where the story goes and learn more about the setting, but I don't know how much is actually fleshed out. Writing off into the unknown is a perfectly fine ending. Plenty of good media does that. I think it suffers because things are obvious until the reveals, which you could expand and make something unique, but it's a beat-em-up game, it's fine. I know there's that saying, style over substance. For Ruiner, style is the substance. Ruiner is an excellent weekend game. 
You can go through the campaign in maybe 5 or 6 hours maximum, but if you did really like it, you have New Game Plus, two more modes to try out, you enjoy it for what it is, and then you're done. I did enjoy playing it, there's just not a lot to come back to later. The combat's fun, but clunky and not that intricate. There's not much of a story to go digging for or big moments to experience again. Ruiner is a fine game, but I can see why it didn't take off. $20 for this kind of game could be steep for some people. It will be down 85% in the pinned link for the next few days, so you can pick it up for about $3. That is well worth it for a weekend game. The studio is working on an FPS called Final Form. I'll be keeping an eye on that because they do know how to nail art direction. If they can get their games to play as good as they look, then they'll be solid. Thanks for watching. The next game will not be a cyberpunk one. Or Drive. How is Ruiner Hotline Miami? <laughs> now that I've covered System Shock games, are there plans to cover Bioshock games? If I did, I'd probably do Ultima Underworld 1 and 2 before. Bioshock games have gotten a lot of coverage already, so at the very least, I'd like to have stuff about the other influences out there beforehand. Did a game ever shock you by how bad it was? Not outright bad, but since we're on the topic, Bioshock Infinite was a weird, weird direction to take. Outright bad might be... Rome 2 Total War? Like, on launch, Aliens Colonial Marines was bad. I mean, it's still bad. But co-op did work and you can play through the game. Both had deceptive marketing, but Rome 2 was non-functional. I wish they kept updating Attila instead. Do I prefer silly or spooky Resident Evil? I think those are such opposite sides of my brain I can't really compare them. Looking back, I think I enjoyed Resident Evil 6 and 7 about the same amount for completely different reasons. 6 is maybe one of the funniest co-op games on the planet. 7 has well done tension and a lot of atmospheric horror in it. They both have a place, but I wouldn't pay full price for 6. Have I voice acted in games or been offered roles? Yes to both. I'm in a few, but some aren't credited to the channel name. I like roles like Coughing Man or Sewer Gremlin. I'm not good enough to be a big character, and I don't want to be. Alright, I'll see you next time. Come on,